bomb tra- shells on them, right? <laughs> yeah. It's the same sort of thing. Like, I treated it like someone would actually treat a relationship. Right, which was... Which which I really liked, and I really liked the role playing, but it kept on feeling like, I don't know, it it it's it's a little weird that like you get pushed into thinking about the moves. So uh, can I just explain something about my character so far? The first one yeah. I had, I was literally exploring. Um, I, Sasha was literally there to explore the mechanisms of having sex in this game, right? That was <laughs> that was the whole intention of me making that character because I wanted to see how far I could push the envelope, and. As it turns out, I had sex with like three people in the first episode. I can't remember. Something like that. Um, and I advanced four times because of it. Um, in the first episode, which is fucking humongous amounts of progress, right? And then my second character, I said, okay, I'm going to give myself a goal here and see what I can do within a couple episodes to get there. And it turns out I got there in one episode. And then my third one, I literally said to myself, I'm going to make a character that doesn't really have any sort of main plot thing here, and I'm going to see if I can make it so that she comes in, she does her job, and then maybe she finds like a, a single relationship out of that and she sticks to it. And that's what uh, that's what my last character was. And I honestly feel this game would would do a lot better if we had like some sort of mechanical like goal system in there. You know what I mean? Like if there was like you're reaching a personal goal. Like maybe you want to make Sar- maybe you want to make Captain, right? Maybe that's like this is my goal. I want to meet Captain. And you are doing everything within your power as a player to get to that point. Then you get rewarded when you get there or you die trying. But like becoming captain is its own reward. You get a no, I get like that. A I get that. I get that. But like at the same time, I feel like a lot of the choices we made were simply because we found out what is going to make us survive longer. And it was just yeah. all mechanics, you know what that's I mean? What, it that's wasn't what I mean, what... you get caught up in the mechanics, and then the mechanics are pushing you to make story. The yeah, story feels a little less natural, yeah. uh, because mm-hmm. we start with the mechanics first and then go to story. And I really like it the other way, when you're using story um, and exactly. mechanics yeah. get triggered. That's, that's um, exactly my point. I, I'm with Virgil on that one. And that's, that's start- how I feel about this game. It started it, out a little bit like that, then it sort of turned around once we learned out how it worked. Yeah. yeah. So I kind of feel like I mean, so this this game already gives a tremendous amount of leeway to the to the game master or the master of ceremony. Sorry, um, and I kind of feel like in along those lines, there should be a few custom moves that the GM has to kind of deal with situations like that to add kind of those story incentives. Say you know you know you advance personal story then you can choose one of these three and then you 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 have that you know to offer your players as a way to pursuing that as kind of an alternate um uh as as an alternate front to the story but you know i i do like i i do understand what you're saying about kind of the whole the way that we kind of pursued the mechanics and maybe that's more of a testament uh-huh. to how we play this game because i know personally like as soon as tatiana got to the point where she was in in con- like leading the squadron like personally i went and i figured out the odds i was like all right if we have like a three on this roll what are the odds that shit's gonna go terribly wrong exactly how much mission pool do we think we're gonna need on any given mission to make sure that shit doesn't go terribly wrong and in truth i think if we had played enough missions we would get to those points because you i mean snake eyes are gonna happen eventually Mm -hmm. doesn't matter if you have a plus three snake eyes are gonna suck because there's no way that you can reach a 10 on that so here's the thing right um, it took me two advancements to make Sonya into basically the best pilot that the 588s have. Like, literally, it took me two advancements. The first one was I made my guts go to plus three, and then I took the 11.4 meters head to tail skill. Mm. After I had that, it was there was literally, like, if I got damaged in flight, I could land. If, I, if there was anything that came up, I could deal with it and not lose my yeah. character, right? There were so, a couple of moves that were just way overpowered. And I think Permanent yeah. File was one of them. Because if you look at the actual like choices you have for Permanent File, none of them force you to make a difficult choice. No. Right? No. So so the, the penalties for ACT UP is you get what you want, or the, the choices for ACT UP is you get what you want, you add one to the mission pool, and you ensure there are no consequences for your actions. Right? If you want the best possible outcome, 
right? If you get a natural 10, you can either choose you don't get what you want, in which case, well, you're not advancing your story and you had a mission pool and then you don't have a, uh, and you, there are no consequences. Or if you want the best of everything, you have to concede something in the process. Whereas if you look at what the permanent file was, there was literally no hard choice. Like there was always a free floating choice. I either added one to the mission pool and either got to mark someone and kill them or change the accepted truth of a situation. And so I think you're right. There are, there are a couple of moves that I think f probably should have been reworked a little bit because they become very powerful very, very quickly. Yeah. Um, and mm. we figured that out pretty early in the game. No, so, yeah. We, we saw where we were dying a lot and we're just like, is there anything that could circumnavigate this? Oh, there is. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, there's a lot of them. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. So, so I don't know. I, I, I did enjoy this game. I, I think that despite some of the mechanics issues, I think there's some aspects of, of the game that could probably be re reworked a little bit better. Um, I, I kind of voiced, I, I kind of feel like our the ease at which we accomplished some of these missions were in how oh, yeah, we like defined actions versus that harm. one mission where we had one plane and we just like, yep, we're done. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Fucking killed it. Everything. I think yep. we had some good roles though too. We have ex other than like the first time I played. Yeah, uh, but even maybe. even on there's, that mission where we that. had one plane, like we still I mean, rolled into it with like five mission pool or something. Yeah. No. Six. Yeah. It was it was six mission pool, and we only used one, I, if I remember correctly. No. One plane. No. We oh, both yeah. rolled elevens on. Maybe the attack if there were right. actually some some missions where we need, would need. To bomb with more than one plane, that would immediately make, make things hard. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. I I one hundred percent agree with you. Like, I, if there's missions where it's like, okay, it's a fortified bunker, it's going to take more than just one bombing run to get this yeah. down. And maybe and, maybe there are some missions that have that as a condition. Like, there's there's some that say that every plane takes enemy fire, and mm -hmm. those are the some of the ones. Like, I don't know if you noticed, but I specifically left a plane at home on that mission mm -hmm. because I knew that. There is no way that we could do like I I I gamed it, but you know mm. I didn't want people making rolls on enemy fire if we didn't have to. The more planes that were there, the worse it was going to be. I also feel like mm. this should like Arthur. I don't know if this is the case or not, but is there a rule, a GM uh, um, move that you can do for a damaged plane going into a bombing run, like to have it fail like on the fly yeah. over? Okay, because nope. that's what I was thinking I mean, would happen with the eleven, and so, I was yeah. prepared for that. So. See, the thing is, uh, yeah, exactly. That uh, it with one plane, you're you're pretty much always you're pretty much best set with one to two planes. Those times when we were setting out with like uh, with with three planes and having a backup at at the start, that was hard. That was the hardest. That was the yeah. times we were suffering the most. The few planes in the air, less rolls, mission pool, everything's fine. Yeah, yeah. If you could just get rid of those pesky NPCs in your group. Yeah, yep. and and you know that's the other thing is that uh, like I in some sense I was almost relieved when the plane was damaged and we had to fly with two planes um, because mm -hmm. we could well, pull we had our to fly with one and when we yeah. had Virgil's other character like I want to fly I want to fly and then you're like yeah. no there's only one plane going out don't worry about it we got this <laughs> <laughs> and and you know I I kind of feel like part of the incentive behind that was the fact that NPCs are always guaranteed to fail which I think is yeah. kind of unfair. Like, if an NPC is required to make a roll, like, the definition in the book is they it's going to fail horribly. And, like, you, you factor that into your, your, your placement of people in planes. Like, basically, mm -hmm. you're almost trying to accommodate the NPCs and not have them do things. Um, yeah, they, they, they do nothing. They're there, and if anything happens to them, they die. They can't do anything useful. They're, I mean... It basically kinda... means you can't take the easy damage. When you when you when you're with an NPC, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in some sense, it, it means that if your character is against killing your NPC co-pilots, there are certain options that are just immediately closed off to you. But then it feels like an almost an escort mission. Like, how do I keep, you know, uh, you know how do what I, I feel like alive? You know what I feel like would be a, a, like a really nice option to add to the night section of this mission. If, for example, because we can't literally, we literally don't have radios, we can't talk to each other. If we literally don't talk to the other people when we're making decisions and they don't hear the decisions mm -hmm. that we make. If, say, you know, I do a bombing run and then, you know, someone else is like, do you admire that? And it's like, well, if they didn't, 
see or didn't know what I was doing. Mm, I don't know. The whole point of Venomai is knowing what consequence you have to eat. Yeah. Mm. I mean, we do have like some. We're doing some signals between each other. We, we yeah, with like we hand can see players. some. We can see some things. We can see if a bombing run is successful. We can see somebody about to get targeted by flak, but. I mean, some other things I, I suppose would probably be a lot more difficult to see. Like, how would we know that we didn't do en enough damage when we're flying? Now, can at you night? imagine during the day if we didn't know what Tatiana was doing? Hmm? Like, none of us had no idea, right? None of us had no idea what Tatiana was doing, and we were literally just going to go see our captain with our own things. And then whenever you say no, I'm not going to let you do that. It's not like we know what you're do you're actively trying to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, like maybe that might have been a better way to handle the daytime stuff as well. Like, but well, it's kind of difficult I, to do that in a game about a mm -hmm. conversation, though, right? That's like, fine. this is not supposed to be done yeah. on. I mean, well, you can do it on Skype, obviously, but like, it's not like everyone mutes their microphone except me and Arthur, and we have a private conversation. Yeah, they did that on Shadowrun. I really didn't like it. It was super oh, like dumb. It. Yeah. Really, you didn't like it? Okay. No, I, I it, like you'd it. never be able to do it at a tabletop, right? Unless you were to, everyone were to sit down and write secret notes and pass it. Yeah, to the they team. said they're the only reason they did it is because one player was literally held hostage, and that they're not going to do it again unless they ever have a situation where one player is literally mm. physically separated from the party. I the mm. game is about the conversation. While your characters may not know the things that other characters discussing you as players should be cognizant of them to build off of these things. I'm going to take a step back until everybody's done, so then I can jump in with my critique. I feel like everyone's slamming this game. No one's I, like, no, 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 no one's no, like, no, I had a lot of fun playing. I'm like, no, I, uh, this is terrible. No, Don't no, listen no, no, to this no, no. audience. I think we kind of got into it. was a great yeah. game. I think the system just needs a Everyone, little bit of tinker. Well, so far, all I've heard is critiques. You're uh, slamming a, critique a wrench on to the it. system, yeah, though. I do want to say on that. The system. Yeah. yeah, the system has some, some issues. This game had some amazing stuff <laughs> happen in it. Yeah. Now, uh, if you told me this was a fiasco game, fucking yes. Would play it in a fucking heartbeat, Arthur. You know that shit. There you go, Dave. Why don't you write a uh, fiasco setting for this? Oh no! Turn the cameras back on. Ah uh, yes. So, okay. so I will say that I had a lot of fun with Tatiana, like building her arc um, over the entire infinite. I wish game. I still played Sasha throughout the whole game because I wanted to fuck everyone in that game. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I started off this game with Tatiana envisioning her to be kind of a support role character and then towards the end of the game um, she's gotten more and more vicious in what she's willing to do to ensure the survival of her squadron. But that's what um, people love, man. They love to see characters change and grow. Yeah. Yeah. No one likes Walter White because he's still a high school right. professor. They like yeah. him because he's a ruthless, <laughs> cutthroat badass. Yeah. Right. I, I think that the game, um, you know, does push that and does have a lot of nice character development and changes and pushes. Um, but I think everyone here is a good enough role player to do that without prompts from the system. Yeah. Well, that's true. Mm. Maybe. Amen. We'll see. I don't know. What do you have to say, Arthur? Yeah, What's I was going to ask, has everybody got their yep. stuff? Yeah, I think I, I hear, have. I'm I want to know what Arthur has to say. I would like to apologize to all the people that didn't have as much fun as they could have. Oh, yes. No, fantastic. Skills like that's permanent fun. file are very powerful. Perhaps they should be retooled. But... Some of the things you complain about, night missions not being very long, that's built into the game. They're not supposed to be very long. The game is not focused on the night missions. Night missions typically take less than 15 minutes. Uh, the ground time was more like an hour and 45. The game is a story about the women and the war, not the battles that they fought. And, um, yes, we did spend a lot of time talking about mechanics and conversation. That was mostly me, and that could be my fault rather than the systems. You would sit down and say you wanted to do something, and I would say, what significant truth are you revealing? That, that's not something that I had to do. That's something I did because I like to know what I'm listening for when you guys are making the moves. Just to make sure that when you say you're revealing something, you've actually done it. Um, yes, there is nothing, there is no move for advancing storyline or anything like that, but you guys are role players. You can do that on your own. There were plenty of scenes where you guys talked to each other. Some of the things you felt were flaws, which were uh, missions got too easy, I felt that was fine. But 
I would look instead at the times you guys purposely put yourselves in danger. Where you would have uh, Virgil's character intentionally going and taking fire. Where you would put planes in the air that were damaged and then say, I want to... Like, literally, the last mission. You, there was a possibility that I could blow up your plane in the air. You put yourself in that kind of risk. You know? That's because it's exciting, man. Like, yes. And that's what, that when, was the other you, thing. when you created opportunities for excitement, shit happened. Yeah, when he, when he said, hey, we're flying over once, this thing. Once like, you had control of the system, once you understood what you needed to do and how you needed to do it, and how you could survive, when you did that and said, I'm going to intentionally fail to make drama, I felt those were the best missions. That was my, that was my thought. When you intentionally did something that put people at risk, that created more drive, and look at how the mission turned out. The end of the mission is... Ileana, someone who has failed constantly to land a plane, who has killed people, has put people at risk, landed the fucking plane, and they threw a fucking party over it. It was the end to her story arc of failure. She'd been getting depressed. She's trying to be better. She, you know, she's looking to move up in the ranks, and now she's done it. She's landed the plane. She's a lieutenant. She's at the top of her game. Excellent. Fucking drama right there. That's what I thought. I yeah, thought that's I, fair. When you when you I, went I, out I, of your way I, to put yourself in dangerous situations, which you guys did outside of the cockpit too, it 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 drove the wheel that that turns the game. You could say it is a wheel that was burning. What? Why is? <laughs> yeah, your camera is not working, yeah. man. All you Andrew need to do is just Arthur. leave the call and come back. It'll <laughs> fix it. Oh, really? I really enjoyed the game because there were a lot of times where I would literally fuck off and be like, wow, I'm just going to talk to chat real quick. <laughs> These bitches are talking about some crazy shit that I'm not involved with. <laughs> you guys are like, I use this move. And you're like, I counter by using this move back on you. And you're like, I write a fucking report. And I'm like, yes. I had nothing to do with the last half hour, and I am great. Yeah, yeah. The, the only thing that I can say is that we spent way too much time preparing for literally 15 minutes of, like, the enemy shot of you. No, really do. you didn't spend too much time. You spent exactly enough time. That was my thought. You guys spent a lot of time. The The point of the game, again, it if you read the GM section... I have, yeah. ...is not to talk about the battles. It is about the struggles of the women. And I feel like we did a lot of focus. Not as much as I would have liked. And there was more humor than I would have liked. But I feel like I feel like I definitely put in a lot of gender equality and like terrible stuff. People shot themselves in the face. There were a bunch of douche bros that showed up. Boris Fedlateral was an amazing villain. He was like, I want to get paid. And then he didn't. He was like, I want to get paid again. And he did it. And he was like fuck it, I'm going to get paid or I'm shutting everything down. And you were like, you're going to shut everything down? I'm throwing you in prison. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, mini storylines and some nice big arcs as well. And uh, Yeah, yeah, I thought, you know, everyone did a great job of inventing the stories uh, as we went along. Yeah, uh, wait, let's take a second and just have everyone talk about their favorite parts of the game because there was a huge amount of criticism. We should talk about the good part. Okay. Uh, Just so that bully plot. pulpit games has come up to me like, damn, this game sounds so bad when you say it. <laughs> so the, my favorite part was after the death of Sasha, uh, Sarah came in with an actual actual objective to kill, like not kill, but find out the the who was responsible for Sasha's death. John Connor. Now the situation ended up that you know Tatiana implicated. Um, uh, whatever her name Sarkova, is. Yeah. Yeah, Sarkova. And she saw an opportunity to, you know, do revenge. Not to say that if she implicated someone who was actually walking around, the situation probably would have been different. And while I'm not a big fan of the result of that, you know, um, I would have preferred to have that character actually die at the hands of my character. But, you know... I can't force my plot onto other people. So, well, Tatiana's learning that all too well. <laughs> um, I, I got to say, my probably my favorite part um, of this game, and I think the one that you know, I I kind of I complained about it for a little while, 
Um, but in retrospect, it actually added a lot of drama to the story with Serafima. Um, and yeah. her complete, like, you know, coming in and bulldozing the entire squad with that whole zealot thing and ratting everyone else out. And like, you know, awesome. it was, it was fantastic because it added a, a threat at home where you actually had to worry about the NKVD because of Seraphima. It didn't matter. Like we had gotten to the point where we were nailing all of our missions and we were, you know, giving them no reason to suspect us except for Seraphima. And I think my personal favorite moment of this entire arc was working to try to get Seraphima back into the squadron. And, like, I, I talked with you guys a little I bit. Don't about fib. You were trying to wrap her around your pinky. I, yeah, no, I, I think was, that was also was. my favorite part. I, I was. I was. But I, it was more that Tatiana was kind of developing into this role where she starts using people rather than trying to protect them. Like, using them to... to Ensure the safety of the squadron. Because if you notice, like, Tatiana still has done absolutely nothing. She She's not acted against someone in her squadron such, well, except for Zubov, but that's another thing, um, in such a way that, that she would cause harm to come uh, uh, from uh, them. <laughs> uh, at least not Zubov. the player characters. Or whatever. The whole thing with, with Sonya and Captain Galunov, I think uh, she kind of took that as, as a threat to the squadron, and she was trying to bring Sonya back in. Yeah, because she was like ace pilot. Don't want to lose her. She's like no, no, no. love but more than I, anything. I I think Tatiana felt that like your aspirations towards being a navigator would cause a death, and that is what she was trying to stem the tide of. And so she she came up with a pretty elaborate plan to try to turn <laughs> Sonya against. Uh, I could see. Captain I could literally see the frustration in your face when I did not accept. Your yeah. No, no, no. I was like, and I'm ah. like, <laughs> I'm like, no. I was I'm literally going to learn how to be a navigator before I become a navigator. Don't be so, fucking stupid. And, and that was actually kind of a follow-on to Serafima yeah. because I had literally just gotten Serafino to come back and and start working for the squadron and start protecting those in the squadron rather than trying to rat us all out to the NKVD. And then she goes off and gets killed, right? <laughs> literally, like five minutes. Five after minutes later. That it was like, and I remember, and, and like, yeah. my character took a mark, and personally, I was like, damn it. I was really hoping to develop that. And I, I think I kind of, like, I was looking between Ileana and Sonya, and I was like, all right, I have this, like, I had wanted to develop this, this person that can work, that isn't really under my thumb, but is working for Tatiana. Um, and I had looked to Sonya originally, and then when it became obvious that that probably wasn't going to pan out as I had hoped, I started turning back towards um, towards Vladia, and I don't know if that was actually going to work out as as planned. But it was, I think, the transformation from support character trying to help the squadron to leader trying to protect, to manipulator trying to keep everyone in line so that they don't get themselves killed, was a really fun arc for for Tatiana. And I don't know how well it worked. I don't know how well you guys thought it worked, um, I, but I, yeah, I thought it worked really well, and you did a great job. And I think if there was, if there was an old lady telling the story every once in a while in our show, that it was probably uh, Tatiana. Um, yeah, once uh, again, bending the truth. <laughs> I think uh, it's already canon this report, that Sonya survived, right? My contributions to the war. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's yeah, it's canon. That it's Sonya canon. Survived. Yeah. Yeah. Like if we uh, never come back to this, I have a feeling that, um, like. Sonya wouldn't have got what she wanted. She probably would have, like, done her duty, like, done her tour, and then she probably would have left without finding the man that she wanted. Uh, she probably. I was would've... prepared to hand Galuna to you. All you needed to do was navigate for one mission. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Seriously? And he would have been like, "Yeah, man." Now that I have a navigator, I'm gonna get her in my co-ed squadron, and we're gonna fly together all day, bang That's all night. That's an interesting tidbit to know, being that uh, Tatiana offered that uh, to. Uh, yeah, to but Sonya. she's a, like she's a, like you gotta remember like her father, whatever. But you know she's not she wasn't about to jump into that like ham fisted. There's yeah. no doubt that she would have failed spectacularly. Now I kind of feel like if this this story goes on any further. Tatiana is going to self combust. Um, she's going down a very, very difficult road, and I think I don't know. I I would actually compare your actions to early Stalin 
Like, you literally are doing whatever it takes to write reports, get attention on yourself, and be like, yo, what's up, Lenin? What's up, Trotsky? I'm mm -hmm. surpassing your bitch asses. I'm the Secretary General. Oh, this position doesn't have any power in the Communist Party? I'm gonna rewrite the fucking bylaws. Guess what? I'm now the leader of the fucking nation. It sounds yeah. like Tatiana. Yeah, that, uh, actually sound yeah, like that does sound like Tatiana, <laughs> doesn't I liked, it? I liked pulling in my, my new character was kind of, uh, at, you know, at the beginning of the episode, can, kind of didn't have an idea. But by the end of the episode, I think it was basically a uh, a weak character that easy, easily manipulated and would have been really fun dropped into that group uh, of people. I didn't yeah, appreciate I the mean, way people made very diverse characters for this. Like, every time they died. And dying happened quite often. People <laughs> brought something new back. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are all... Yeah. It yeah, wasn't literally really like good. watching Dan play the same as Mark Cleric three times in a row. Yeah, uh, I, just, uh... I really enjoyed uh, the the humor part. I know you said you thought it was a little too silly. You should never invite me if you don't want it to be silly. Yeah, I, I, so Night Witch is supposed to be a very dark, very serious game. <laughs> and it's not that humor is bad. I just felt like... I personally made it too humorous at times. Specifically, what? just look at tonight with Dumkov. Like that was that lovely, got... though. I just want to tell yeah. you, I really enjoyed that. And then we, you know, uh, it was a thing okay. that inspired him to draw it on the thing. And then, like you know, I'm adding so like the motion things. So there is a reason for that. I literally PM'd off, and I'm like, "Hey, can you make it so that Sonya can have a taboo relationship with one of these German soldiers?" And he like replied to me, "Yep." Those <laughs> 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 guys showed up. And That's I never got an opportunity because everyone was like too busy swarming around the new interaction that they wanted to do, and and Sonya never got to like actually be a part of that. That's and I'm kind of like, yeah, I, uh, whatever. It turned out fine in the yeah. end, but at the same time, like I was looking for I ways. Feel like you could have a flashback where literally they come out of uh, Captain Krishna's office, and you're like standing there smoking a <laughs> cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, I was an actual GM move. I think it's called throw sexy partisans at them. <laughs> it's called <laughs> throw sexy. I'll, I'll look up the name of the move, but yeah, that it was an actual GM move, or well, it was a threat move. So when you asked for partisans to show up and disrupt things, I was like, okay, sure, whatevs. We asked for that. Oh yeah, he did. Didn't he we? did. He yeah. sent me a Skype message asking for it. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> and I would point out he is the only one they didn't interact with. <laughs> so I was I was looking for a way to change Sonya, and yeah. I figured a way to do that would have her have a relationship she never wanted to have and have her like it. That's basically how I was thinking about it. Um, oh, God. And the, only, and the yeah. only way to do that would be with some fucking sizzling fucking six-pack motherfucker, you know what I mean? Like, like just like basic instincts got the better of her, and she hates herself for it, sort of thing. That's what I was hoping to go with, but the re you know what? The end result was literally every single woman aside from Sonya got a piece of that action. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what would have been a really dark story if uh, Sonya had actually accepted the navigator role, and Captain Galuna actually came and took took her up on her offer. To form a relationship, hmm. and Petrovna sent that letter before the mission. Oh fuck! <laughs> oh <laughs> shit! Wow, that was brutal as a motherfucker. Can man. I just say that that turn you did, like literally, when I failed that reach out, I'm like, oh, he's literally just gonna say like, nah, bitch, I'm not into you. And then he turned around and said that. I'm just like, well played, Arthur. You yeah, I, I was channeling bitch. some Adam Cobell there. I like, was like, well let's, played. Let's make it interesting. I don't want it to be exactly what you think it would be. Because I was literally just going to be like, okay, I'm going to swap that plus one into a plane, right? That was my plan. And then you're just like, fuck you. you take this instead. And I'm like, oh, this is so good. I can't not like run with this now. Like. <laughs> Yeah, I felt like there was a lot of good things that, like, every time something would drop down, people would be like, okay, we can just run with this. Like, so I, I think so that, that actually kind of speaks to, to the game. Like, we, we had a lot of fun with the parts of the game that didn't involve roles, I guess is what it boils down. Because nothing we're saying that we enjoyed most about this game had anything to do with any move that we did. Um, maybe failed moves. But, Permanent file. You had a lot of fun using that. Uh, that was that was mm. me being a mechanics bitch. I had a lot was, of fun with the uh, with the with the um the hawk move the, raptor raptor yeah i thought that was a great yeah. move that's yeah. a fucking great move 
And by the way, Thor, can I just say the fact that you took Raptor and then you like went about it the completely opposite way? Because in my opinion, Hawk is like super sexually aggressive, like to the point where, you know, it's just like, hey, f like, you know, the guy's sitting there on the bench eating his lunch. You come up, you put your fucking leg in between his like legs and you say, let's do it. You know, that's that's what I imagine a Hawk being like, you know, just walking up and taking what she wants from men. But, like, the way that you played it was super... There are many ways to accomplish the goal. Yeah. I, I kind of wanted to try and create a sort of uh, fe feminist uh, character, sort of, you know, before time, instead of trying to just, uh, you know, Why not that I'm saying anything is wrong. Miss Miss Anthropic, or whatever it is. Miss Anthropic. Because that's yeah. basically the feminist character, in my opinion. Yeah. It, it took that and took, like, you know... She, I wanted her to be like, you know, you know, have absolutely no problem with just, you know, oh, I need to unwind. Let's go, uh, let's go have some sex and uh, get rewarded for it. Cool. And then, you know, and then when it comes down to it, you know, still she, she doesn't, she doesn't, she did never considered, you know, men to be superior, basically. She wanted, she, her acting up wasn't the, was, was Getting getting women to award us medals instead of the men because you know she, she didn't like being humiliated for what she thought was just you know well, perfectly that's, normal. Like that's also the other thing that came up, right? You know, people being like, "Oh, I I fucking I rank up," and it's like Arthur's like, <laughs> "That's a GM threat move." Yeah, right. And then booty. you you literally subverted that. You guys put your shit on the line by acting up, and after that. I never had anybody mock you, nor did I have any non-women hand out your medals. Yep. You got your shit together. Can I have to say, the slut-shaming in episode one was fucking real. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know that we did any slut-shaming. <laughs> Are you kidding me? The two fucking NPCs were like, we don't want you in our group, Sasha. And I'm like, holy shit. All right. uh, so I don't know if there was so much the sleeping around, no one would have cared about that, but the fact that you got like three promotions out of it or yes. something obscene that, yeah, that's that is definitely that's not that yeah that's something yeah, different. No, that's exactly shut slut shaming you know? no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know I think there's something getting what you about. want with sex is literally what that is so uh, there you go okay we have different definitions then the GM threat I was looking for for those at home following along on the GM side is under the state it's called introduce them to dashing sexy partisans which i think i did justin bieber hair and rock i'm surprised you didn't use like daniel craig or something like that as a fiction i don't think he's german i literally he's went on the pinterest and typed, Arthur, listen i went to pinterest and my search was sexy german military men <laughs> and that's what we got Google history forever now. <laughs> Uh, that is going to bite you in the ass sometime when somebody did that. <laughs> yeah, that's going to get targeted ads now, like everywhere. <laughs> Why wasn't Alex Tudyk in this hot German. German list that yeah. you had? Why Come wasn't on. who? Alan Tudyk, Wash. Ah, He's I'm German. sorry, man. Come Take on. it up with randoms. Pinterest. It's the most famous, Take, amazing German. Take it up with Pinterest. <laughs> Take it up with Pinterest. Write an email to Pinterest. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey Alan Tudyk, if Alan Tudyk had showed up, uh, Zerkova would probably have, you know, done something completely different. <laughs> but that's probably just me. I feel like it would be dangerous for him to be anywhere near an aircraft. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a leaf on the wind. Watch me. <laughs> <sighs> Hopefully every Especially one of your viewers has uh, watched the movie. How do <laughs> reavers clean their spears? They take them to the wash. I feel like you told that joke earlier in this. I this. didn't. Are you sure? Because I heard it. I'm sure you've said it before. That's because it's been on Twitter lately. Oh, uh, okay. Because um, Nathan Fillin said it at a oh, con that's recently. Right. Yep. Mm. Uh, yeah. I no, wish I'm I had had my sunglasses ready. I started saying the joke before I even thought to reach out to and grab my sunglasses. Yeah. yeah. It's nice to have them so oh, close no, no, by, no. though. You put them through the wash. Yeah, yeah you That's put it. them through the wash. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it. His name was Wash in that show. They He got stabbed yeah. in the chest with the Reaver spear. I didn't get it. <laughs> have, you, have you seen Firefly? 
Yes. Uh, Have you seen Serenity? No. That's why uh, okay, okay, then. okay, then that's why. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we didn't We've say we didn't watch Serenity. Thanks. I... Listen, they're going to reboot Firefly. It starts with a conversation between Wash and uh, the Shepherd. No, they literally have. It's called the Con Man. Mm -hmm. It stars the guy that was the blonde haired dude. The pilot. Yeah, Alan Tudyk. Alan Wash. Tudyk. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he's literally playing a guy that goes to cons because he only yeah, had one. He's the pilot, and Nathan yep. Fillon is the, yeah. the star. Yeah. Yep. Mm hmm. Conman, I can't wait to see that. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, let's, uh, can we wrap this bitch up, Arthur? Yes, we can wrap this bitch up. Anyone have any final mystical parting words? Anything they'd like to say to our sponsors at Bully Pulpit Games? Uh, who, who to the Booty Witches? Sweat employees that are in the chat, uh, thank you very yeah. much for the cans of energy drink you sent me. It's really nice. <laughs> booty Sweat for urban markets. <laughs> Seriously, I have an exclamation point booty shake on my, on my thing that just as a URL to bootysweat.com.au yeah. forward slash yeah. booty drink. sweat drink energy um, drink and uh, bust the nut energy bars, right? <laughs> bust the nut. <laughs> yeah. Man, that movie bust the nut. was Almond so good. Almond and walnut. Yeah, I his gotta name say, is Busta and he like holds nuts. He's just like, ah. Tom Cruise was amazing in that movie. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. We're talking about Tropic Thunder. Tropic Thunder. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. That's where that's where Booty Sweat's from. It's a <laughs> fake drink from inside the movie. Yeah. Okay, I remember that now. Yeah. Most most of the products that I speak about are either other live streams or fake products from within video games, like Nuka Cola and Toby Maguire, the MTV voted Best Kisser Award Kiss of 2013. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. Any other final thoughts for the night? Uh, good game, guys. Thanks for having me play. Yeah, thanks, Virgil, yeah. for uh, stepping in halfway through the campaign. It was literally okay. the second episode yeah, of five. Second episode, man. <laughs> halfway through. Sort yeah, of. I was jumping in still. <laughs> it was a bit yeah. weird, but I. Nah, I, not at I, all. I really liked the I really liked your GM style and like uh, your descriptions, Arthur. Um, and you were really funny and the you know. Yo, if you want me to jam any one of your games, Arthur, I seriously recommend you don't make a game with fucking 70,000 uh, valves in Russian names. <laughs> yeah. I swear to God. Dude, I was swear like, to God. You I can potentially not... take over uh, one of the Apocalypse World. You, in fact, you'd probably have Live... more knowledge about Apocalypse World than, than we would. I assume well, you, you up... might have more knowledge about Australia. Yeah, Australia. I don't know That's if you'd have more about Apocalypse Fair World. Enough. Well, I could play hella NPCs. That's what I'm saying. If you could only remember their names. G'day, Sheila. My name's Bazza. <laughs> I'm Australian, and you want me water. So, as you might be able to tell, now obviously it won't be up for a week, but in the upper right-hand corner of this video, there should be a card appearing shortly that tells you to go to Apocalypse World, which we'll play next week and is the next in our series of games that we're doing. So, Apocalypse World, it'll be there. Have a good night, everyone. We still got a little bit to talk about on privately, but, you know. Good night.